Out of every 100 people, only three have a prayer life. That have a Bible, that go to church, and some of them are pastors. It always gets real quiet. If the shoe fits, get a new pair. Today, right now, we're going to pray. Out of every 100 people, three to five win souls. Do you see? The people that don't win souls do not have the prayer life that God wants you to have. If you did, there'd be no way you could shut in your face. Because it's rivers of living water. Rivers of flowing, living, flowing out of your belly will flow. Rivers of living water. He was talking about the Holy Ghost. If you don't, if you got living water, yeah, rivers good flowing, and you don't say nothing, your face will blow up. <gasps> Thank you. So look at this. She got it right there. Did you see that face kind of explode? Yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah. If you were invited by me, stand with you. If I invited you. I invited you, actually. I said, Ed, let's do a meeting. <laughs> Yay! Jeez, I must have opened my mouth. <laughs> okay, is anybody else bring somebody here today? Put your hand, let me just see. You did. Right, where are they? All back here? Yeah, my grandson. Fantastic. Look at you. My kind of peeps. Come on, somebody. Look at there. Look at there. Wow, wow, wow. So we're going to do this kind of quickly. But let's honor the man of God here. What are you here, Pastor Dan? Just I want to stay standing because I'm coming to you. I want you to tell me what you hear, what you think the Spirit of the Lord is saying. All right, ready? Pastor Dan, what do you hear the Spirit saying to the church at this time? I can only tell you what he told me in 03 when I had that heart attack and died in Wednesday night in the East Island City and came back and I had what we to do. He says, tell my church, tell my people that are coming soon that they are to reach out and love and to touch lives and win souls for my heart and my heart that I'm coming soon. Come on. That's absolutely a word from the Lord. Now, you guys may or may not know Sister Sandy. But Sister Sandy was, and her husband, Max, Max put a microphone. Have you been on my Facebook lately? I just told the story uh, before Kim Clement passed away. I preached for him twice. And I told the story, and Max was sitting in the audience. I said, that man right there, this general, Max Rappaport, he put a microphone in my hand. I thought I drove all the way to Phoenix at, at it, what was it called? Park in Canto. And it was Resurrection Sunday, and they were having a kegger party. Everybody in the park was drunk as a skunk by noon. And then they had this rock and roll band. So in between the rock and roll bands, her husband says, Come watch me preach the gospel to 10,000 drunks. And I told my brother Ken, I said, I've got to see this. I said, I. I don't think that could end well. I, blah, 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 blah. So I get there and Max says, Do you believe I hear from God? I said, Yes, General. Do you believe I hear the Holy Ghost? I said, Yes, General. And so he starts to walk away and he goes, Good, because today you're preaching. Oh, man. <laughs> he catched me the microphone. I'm going, 41. Yeah, so that was a special day. So my brother and I went up on stage, and I'm like praying in tongues, and God help, what you do, and uh, and I got a vision from the Lord. I said, Ken, grab that paper, roll it up like a joint. 
And he goes, what? Roll it up. I said, just do it. I said, you got a lighter? And he goes, no, not anymore. I said, borrow one quick. So he's over there. He finally gets the lighter. Didn't take him long. I said, when I tell you, light the thing up and smoke it. He goes, what? I said, just follow me. So I'm trying to preach the gospel to these 10,000 drunks. And they're throwing stuff. And at one point I said, the next person that throws something at me, I'm going to come see you face to face. Beware, I've not been saved that long. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so he starts. <laughs> and I said, Mr. Sinnerman, do you know what's better than that joint in your hand? He went. <laughs> and he goes, yeah. I said, what's that, Mr. Sinnerman? And he went. Two joints in the hand. <laughs> the whole part. Mm, they're all on Ken's side. But we won, <laughs> kind of won them over. And long story short, gave an altar call. Over 50 people came and got born again. And one man's leg grew out. He heard about my leg, crippled leg, grow back. What's the spirit of the Lord saying, Sandy? The spirit of the Lord is saying to me, okay, Something like what you said, Pastor, that we are in the end time. And to preach the gospel as sharing that, that the hour we are in, history is serious. We are in the end time. We're not just saying it. We really, really are. And as you watch the days and the prophecies being fulfilled, and you study, I studied Revelation from the day I got saved. I wanted to know the end of all this, the day I got saved. And I haven't been out of that book in all these years, and it's been 51 years that I met Jesus. And Max and I were called to uh, preach the gospel. We got a big Bible, we went, and the Lord led us to Huntington Beach, and you probably all heard of the Jesus movement. Well, we were there in 1967, preaching the gospel with thousands getting saved. We didn't know that we were in a move of God because we just got saved. And so it was an awesome time. And we're still now, the Lord always says to me, and I pray, redeem the time yes. for the days are evil. We're in an evil generation. And this is the last generation, and it's evil, and we are to pray continuously, and we are to be wise, not foolish virgins, but wise, yes. because he's coming oil. for the wise. The Holy Ghost. And yes. have the oil and are paying the price to follow him, regardless of what happens in our life. And we need each other desperately. And we need to be one with each other. We need to pray with each other and support each other in this hour. Because, you know, we see the Lord says, uh, you know, I'm telling you what's going to happen before it happens. So when you see it, which we're seeing these things, you'll know how near I am. And so that's what the Lord's saying. Be filled. How are we yes. filled? Be filled continually. It says in Ephesians, be filled with the Spirit. How singing, making melody in your heart, preaching the gospel, talking to one another, reading the word, encouraging one another, calling your friend, the sub fellowship. Be continuously with the Lord and talking to Him. And fellowshipping with it because those who walk in the light uh, as, as he is in the light will have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ continually cleanses us as we have fellowship. So it's no little thing to have fellowship in the spirit with your brothers and sisters because we're being connected and there's a remembrance that said a book of remembrance going on as we share with one another all the things that are happening and going on and praying for each other. So that's what the Lord is speaking to me. And preach the gospel. Talk to anybody. You're, wherever you are. I go to the donut shop and I'm telling you, I have so many people 
I can sit and they just copy and their door opens and I can share the word with them. It's awesome. Questions like, will there be donut holes in heaven? <laughs> well, will you be there to find out? Uh, can you put up Revelation 3.20? It's a letter to the church. We're getting ready to pray here in a few minutes. The Lord's standing, and he says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hear my voice and open the door, I will come in, and I will sup with him, and he with me. That is saying this. Behold, I stand at the thora. It means a new gateway a place that's different from where you've been, a place of revelation, illumination, fire, impartation, uh, understanding God on an intimate level. I open the door, I open the thura, and I'm knocking. If any man hear my voice. Come on, everyone in church, you know that one. It's right there, just read it. If anyone hear my voice. The Greek word is phone. Say it with me. Say phone. Look to your neighbor and make your hand like this, like it's a phone. Say, hey neighbor. Hey neighbor. God's calling. God's calling. Hey, neighbor. hey neighbor. The word phone is where we get phone. God's knocking. He's calling. He wants to come in and be intimate with you. This is kind of a special day because all these 41 years ago, it's kind of funny, you guys right here, so you were mentoring me, and then I mentored her. This is Aunt Wanda, Aunt Missy, my sissy named Missy, and, and uh, we have back there Dennis, the son of Missy, and I talked to Missy on Super Bowl Sunday, and maybe I should just let you, you want me to tell it? So she, we, you know, we at one point in our journey growing up, we were seven day Adventists, you know, Church of Christ, Baptist, all, you know, everybody's trying all these churches. And I'm going, my God, I said, I know I'm going to the Baptist church, but I prayed this prayer. I asked God to fill me with the Holy Ghost. And I said, I'm telling you, I see things different. I hear things different. She goes, what you saying? I go, I'll tell you later. But I'm telling you right now. That it's not religion, it's relations. I'm telling her, and I challenged her. I said, just in case you're not saved, like me, I said, before the sun goes down tonight, I said, ask Jesus to do the real thing. And you went and grabbed what? Well, because he does have a love for us. I wanted to make sure that I was doing this on my own. So, I'm not a real avid football. Uh, so I Super just Bowl went Sunday. into the restroom the and um, I knelt down and I asked the Lord into my heart. And you I was just the talking about you the toilet. Yeah, I, mean, I wasn't hung over <laughs> But, uh, yeah, you know, and, and even though I was great Adventist and I went to the school and I just said, you know, if you're really real, you know, I'm tired. And you absolutely got saved. Yeah. And you stayed safe. Not everybody stays safe. <laughs> well, well, I was a prodigal for a little while. Uh, well, you actually about 20 years safe. ago. Yeah. You know, and that's why I think it's true. You have to repent. You can't stay Thank you, Sissy. Awesome. All these years. And you became Baptist Cotters. Seven Dad Venice Costal, too, didn't you? I mean, you got a hold of those. Come on, son. All right. Danielle, come on. You brought somebody with you. Who's over here? This is my daughter, Ashley. Hi, 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 Ash
Hi! Wow, are you having fun? All right, your mom was kind of wild. You just went somewhere international to preach the gospel. Where'd you go? I went to Honduras. And what happened there? Um, I walked, actually. <laughs> um, so something that God's been really talking to me about lately is faith and trusting Him. Talk louder, closer. Because so where faith we're faith and trust, guys. Faith and trust in him. Because where we're getting ready to go, um, we're going to have to have a higher level of faith and trust in him to be able to achieve the things that he needs for us to achieve in the south. So when I was in Honduras, um, I minister, but I've never been exposed to crowds like I was when I was in Honduras. The first night we had over 5,000 people. Um, first night was Salvation Night. The second night was Healing Night. And because of the people received so much on the first night, of course, they tell a friend. And there was over 10,000 people. It literally doubled the next night. And the next night was Healing Night. And so, I mean, my goodness, I've never, ever, never, ever been in a crowd like that at all. And it's very intimidating. <laughs> I don't know if you guys have ever, I know you have, you know, but for me, I mean, you know, I'll have a meeting, I'll have, you know, 50-some people, and now you're standing in a crowd of like 2,000 people. It's very, very intimidating. And as I'm standing there, I don't speak the language at all. And although I had an interpreter with me, I'm looking at the people, and I'm like, there's no way. I mean, because you have thousands who came up to the altar call. And I'm looking like, my God, how does this work? <laughs> you know, God, you've never placed me in a situation like this before. Like, how do I do this? So if you summed up what the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, is saying to the church, let's just pretend that okay. you're yeah. on the cross. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to share an experience because yeah. this is going to help. This yeah. is going to tie yeah. into yeah. that. So as I'm sitting there and I'm saying, look, I can't do this. We can't stop and, and talk to each person and find out what's going on. There's a lot of people. We don't have that kind of time to do that. And so I just looked up to God and said, God, you know what? This, this is not me anyhow, this is for you. You know, it's not by my might or power, but this is gonna to have to take place by your spirit. Because I don't I don't speak the language. You know, we don't have time to sit and talk to every person to find out what their infirmity is. And so at that point, the interpreter just kind of looked at me and I said, look, this is what we're getting ready to do. When you, when you see me step in front of someone, you're just gonna to have to go behind them. And, and I don't need to interpret because it's gonna be God. God knows what's wrong with that person. He knows what's going on in their body, and we're just going to lay hands and let the power of God work. Yeah. So going back to how I began, the faith and trust in God, because I know in my ability, there was no way that was going to happen. But look, God's going to be starting to put us before crowds and people. And although we might say, oh, I'm not qualified, I, I, I don't know, you know, but it's not about us. It's about having the faith in Him because nothing's impossible for God. So what it, verse? What verse? What verse? Because my verse, when I was trying to get started in the kingdom and winning souls, I ended up grabbing a guy by the throat and shoved him up the wall because he cussed. I go, how dare you cuss in my presence? Don't, don't even. And 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 I'm choking him. His feet are dangling. My brother's going. I don't think we're supposed to do it like this any longer. And so I let him down, and he goes, what's wrong with you? You're trying to save me? Now you're trying to slay me. And I felt so bad. I went back to the Baptist church, and Roger said to me, what promise are you standing on so you don't choke people? I said, I don't know. And he gave me Exodus 4.12, so if you're taking notes, write that down. God says to his people, therefore go. I'll be with your mouth. I will teach you what to say. I went that day and went to San Bernardino on 5th Street at the time I lived out there. And I talked to two people, and both of them prayed and received the Lord. I threw them in my pickup truck, 1967 Chevy, six-cylinder flathead, and brought them to church, and it's never stopped since. So your scripture that you're going to tell people so it can get on the Internet and go all over the world is... Oh, one of my faiths. Zechariah 4 6. Say it. Not by, my, not by my power, but by my spirit. Not by military might. 
Not by the might of an army or a whole bunch of people. That ain't how it's going to get done. Not by might, nor by power. Not by the power of your thinking. Not by ingenuity. Not by because you're a brainiac and you can figure it all out. That ain't going to happen. It's not by a bunch of people. It's not by one guy that's extra smart or one girl. But it's by my spirit, says the Lord. When I fasted 40 days so my daughter wouldn't die, she ended up going to heaven. When I fasted 40 days, I lost 100 pounds. I go to Louisiana, Jesse Duplantis, Jules Bouquet, my son, others were all there. And every year I break a pair of handcuffs and then another pair. And then now it's time to break seven pair, but life happened. And I was like, man, I need to fast. And I fasted 40 days, 100 pounds light, I show up. And they go, well, I guess you're not going to break seven pair of handcuffs. And I said, either God is God or he's not. And Jules is like, huh, what? And I said, I'm standing on Zechariah 4, 6. Not by might nor by power, but by the Spirit. And God is my witness. Jesse DePlanis is my witness. My son is my witness. Jules is my witness. Pop, pop. Broke seven pair of handcuffs, broke my arm, doubled the world's record in the triple break, broke my head. I got blood running. I had a broken arm, and I'm standing there. I'm going, this blood ain't for you, but his blood is. And about close to 2,000 people received the Lord that night. Come on, somebody. But yeah, I mean, not by might nor by power. The Spirit of God in our life will raise dead people. It will cause you to do physical and spiritual things that we never, never, never could do before. People got healed. We just plastered the camera. I went wherever God highlighted the light above their head, and I just went for it. Do you have your passports missing? No. Maybe you're supposed to go with her next time. <laughs> somebody and the Lord will say divine appointment or the Lord will say that one or the Lord will say talk to him and then I'm, and then if sometimes I've noticed if I'm a little well occupied I'm finishing up whatever text or whatever and they say you know they're talking to me and I'm going oh so you want to talk to me huh you have no idea who you're talking to guess where we're going we're going to get saved you know, you're going to run alright warriors introduce yourself my name is Lord and this is Michelle these are radical Soon to be married on February the 15th. Come on! Yeah! yeah. yeah. So, we are excited, yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, of course. <laughs> yeah. 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 No. <laughs> so, do you have something you want to share? Okay. Um, you know, I just wanted to say, like, um, Stand up and look people in the eye. Preach. Okay, so, um, the battle is really intense and hot. And the enemies turn up the heat. But God's got fire way hotter than any yes. living thing that's going to tell you about your need. So um, I will I will not bow my knee to the enemy. We will not. Yeah. We got the spirit of, the spirit that raised Christ from the dead. The spirit of life yeah. lives yeah. inside of us. So how am I going to fight as some uh, bow to some wicked ruler? You know what I mean? I will not bow my knee. And the battle is, is hot and intense. But you know what? God allows us to go through some things, and sometimes we bring it on ourselves. Mm -hmm. Right here, I'm just you know yeah. confessing this, but go through the fire and it, and, it, and it melts everything that's not of God off of you, even me. You know, the yeah. things I can do it on my own. I don't have any strength. I have yeah. his strength. Right. So I just wanted to encourage you that, you know, when, when, when the pain is so much in your body or, or whatever it is you're going through, the attack is so heavy, he's the glory and the lifter of your head. And he gives us the strength to do it. Man. <laughs> Thank God for that because I don't have the strength, you know. And uh, I'm not a proud man. I, I like that because if I was, you'd get trouble in your own pocket, you know what I mean? I don't need God. 
you know, when you float them along and everything's okay. I don't really like those times. Yeah. I don't like the hard times either, but when it's too easy, I don't like that because I drift away from God. That's a dangerous place. So I just want to encourage you, stay in the fire. Yeah. Just like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego went in the fire. And, and everything would burn off their balance. Their, 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 they tied their hands, and those were burnt off. In other words, the enemy's trying to, to bind us and threaten us and say, I'm going to kill you, I'm going to take you off. Big deal. My guy, I would live, you know, with Jesus forever, you know? But that will break off the chains. Being in the fire will break your chains. I know it's uncomfortable to the flesh, but that's what it's supposed to be. What did Jesus do? He did the ultimate. He went through more than any else will, will ever go through. So let the chains break. Stand in the fire, man. I mean, it's the best place to be. It's even hard to say it because our flesh don't like it. But it's the best place to be. The Lord is our shepherd. We shall not want. He makes us lie down in green pastures. He leads us beside the still waters. He restores our soul. He leads us in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yes, so we walk through the valley of the shadow of death. We don't fear evil. He's with us. His rod and staff comfort us. He prepares a table before us in the presence of the church. Oh, Paul said, that which comes upon me daily, worse than being snake bit, shipwrecked, dead several times, was the persecution of the church. It's the religious people. Yeah. And so, and, and he said, surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and I'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever. But the valley of the shadow of death, if you go into the Hebrew, it says that God is our pastor and our shepherd during self-promotion, self-exaltation, everything that's self and flesh, that's what puts us in the valley of the shadow of death. And he's with us to walk us through these difficult, hard times and finally get to that place that says, I don't care if it costs me my life, I'm going to do this. When I go overseas, I sometimes I, I said, if I never come back, I'm going to preach the gospel. And believe me, I've been tested. I have been tested. I mean, when they're throwing rocks at you and screaming at the top of their lungs or eyeballs are out on still, ah, hell no. Yeah, I just showed this on Cross TV. We showed a video and told the whole story in Indonesia. We were chased, stoned, chased for three hours, arrested twice, interrogated. And, uh, and I flew my team out when they let us go the second arrest. And I flew us out to the tune of almost $2,000 American money to catch the next plane because the next batch, we'd still be in prison or dead or tortured all this time since 2009. And so God is good. Amen. Good work, brother. All right. So he's with us in the valley of the shadow of death. Now we have, look, you even brought your warrior preacher. You know, the Bible says be a good soldier of Jesus. Yes? You know that word soldier's warrior. You're not allowed to be a sissy. You're not allowed to be too calm. You can be a calm warrior, you know. <laughs> okay. So the Lord's highlighting this verse to me. Um, Behold, so look, I give unto you, that's us, I give unto you power to tread on serpents mm -hmm. and scorpions and over all all the power of the enemy. That's all of it. Not just some of it. It's all of it. So, uh, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Amen. Amen. Okay, Acts, uh, Acts 19, start with verse 1. We're going to go through 1 through 7. And then we're going to stand up. And we are going to go through some decrees, some proclamations. We're going to go through some uh, let go devil, and then I've got this oil that I'm going to anoint you. This special supernatural uh, Bible keeps making this oil. It is, uh, you can see through it. I mean, it's like glass, and there's hundreds and hundreds of it, as I've already told you. Okay, and it will come to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, he passed through the upper coast of Ephesus, and he found certain disciples. And he said, hey! Did you guys receive the Holy Ghost since you believe? And they went, hey, we've not heard where there be any Holy Ghost. He went, hey, how are you baptized? And they said, hey, by John's baptism. And he says, well, John baptized temporarily with water, 
But you're supposed to believe on him coming, that is on Christ Jesus, and he'll baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. And when Paul laid his hands on all 12 of these disciples who didn't have the Holy Ghost, all 12 spoke in tongues and prophesied. This was 20 years after the day of Pentecost. We need a baptism of fire. We need a baptism that will cause us to want to be provoked to not be happy unless we come. Oh, bo sho to. Jesus told his disciples, could you not pray? Come on, somebody say, is anybody alive in the house today? If I preach like this overseas, they're screaming and yelling and throwing stuff. Stand to your feet, you guys. Hallelujah. Can we get some music here in the background? We need a baptism of fire. We need a baptism of the Holy Ghost. We need a baptism of power so that we can do what we're supposed to do. And I'm not supposed to go any further until you say what the Spirit is saying to the church. Glory to God. Uh, this has been resonating in my heart for quite some time. And what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to the church, and it's for the church only, is that we must reset. We must reset. We must reactivate. Empower. Stimulate exact truth. Exact truth. That's the word of God. Taking the word of God at face value. And along with that, God is saying that he will give the grace to empower us to do so. And grace has a location. The location of grace is at the throne of God. And if we find ourselves at the throne of God, he will give us the grace that we can reset. Yes. And the other part of that resetting is that we must seek God for a childlike faith. Because our minds have been tainted, influenced, and turned away from God, we've made God an afterthought. We must go back to our first love. And God will empower us to reset then we will reach the world and Christ can return. Yes. I heard right. You had a word. Does your wife flow with you this way? The word is saying that we are in a kingdom that cannot be shaken. The word is saying that we are in a kingdom that cannot be shaken. The kingdom of the living God. Always remember when trials and persecution come around us, he says that we are in this kingdom, the kingdom of God that cannot be shaken because he's a consuming fire. We always got to remember to let our light shine so others will see the Jesus that lives within us. When we think that nobody is watching us, even our neighbors, we always have to be ready and let our light shine and share the love of Jesus with people. Because people are watching us. We got to show love. We got to forgive one another so that Christ could move in our life and so that we could see the kingdom of God here on earth. We just glorify him today and know that he is with us. He is in us. And when we speak that word in faith, it will come to pass. But we have to remember that we are no more foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God because we serve a God that is a consuming fire. And when we speak his word, his word go uttering out to the world so Jesus could come and we could go home and be with him and spend eternity with him. Glory, 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 glory. My God. You know, and I know you guys know this, but Hebraically, you know, this is how the church was. 
One had a song, one had a word, one had an exhortation, etc. You know, I, I got a little shift there with these guys, and uh, we're still going. I'm still going to anoint you with oil, but I, I would like to call you forward and just spend a few minutes at the altar and cry out for your family, your bloodline, and then, and then after the time of repentance, I'm going to have you stand to your feet. I'm going to lead you in something what I call breaking the bloodline curses, generational curses. But would you do that? Would you participate with me if there's any way physically? If you could come to this altar around here and just and kneel, sit, whatever, and uh, just start crying out to the Lord. Go ahead and play some music. Revelation 2 talks about going back to our first love like the brother just talked about. And it literally means in the Greek, go back to where you labor for intimacy with God. Go back to where you spend time laboring, laboring in prayer. And then it says, so that I don't come and remove your candlestick from its place. The word place. The word place in the Greek is topos, T-O-P-O-S. And topos means these words. This is what we will not lose if we labor in prayer. And uh, I would like to invite all, everyone in the church, if you can, and if the altar's full, just use this front row as an altar and turn, turn to these chairs. But the word place means territory. God wants to give every one of us new territory, position, power, territory, position, power, opportunities with favor, territory, position, power, dominion, authority, territory, position, power, dominion, authority, And many, many, many places of favor. That's our place, Topos. The Bible said if we let the sun go down on our wrath, in Ephesians, that we give Topos, we give our place to the devil. And we don't want to do that. We want to be a people that we seek and, and we ask and, we, and we, we reach out to the things of heaven, the things of God, and the things of our community. I'm standing personally for my bloodline. I'm standing for my sons and daughters and my grandchildren. I'm standing for my siblings every day. I'm so serious about this, I record it on my phone. And while I'm driving, then I play the recordings through my speakers. And then I quote the word of God over my bloodline. And I decree and declare that they are disciples, well taught of the Lord, great is their peace, and undisturbed composure, that they will not practice sinning, because they're born of the Spirit of God. The Spirit of life in Christ Jesus sets my family, your family, and whoever you're praying for, in Jesus' name, sets them free from the law of sin and death. Greater is he that's in us, than he that's in the world. And we can, and they can, and those who we stand the gap for, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Our God supplies all of our needs today according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. That the communication of our faith becomes effectual because we are acknowledging the word of God. We are acknowledging the promises of God that are yes and amen. Why? Because God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He's the soon coming master. And we thank you, God. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Thank you, Lord. You said if we would confess our sins, that you're faithful and just to forgive us in our bloodline, to forgive us our sins, 
and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You said, Lord, that if we say that we do not sin, that we have not the truth, and that we call you a liar. And we don't do that. We know that your word says that we need to run to the Lord and not from the Lord. We need to run to the Lord and not from the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. These precious few moments for everyone here, Father, I thank you. I thank you for hearing their prayers. I thank you that the blood of Jesus is dripping down that cross, down the axe of heaven that swings now and cuts off the tentacles of hell. Hallelujah. In our life, in our bloodline, the past, the present, the future, Lord, we lay it all on the throne of grace. We cast all concern, fear, doubt, worry, oppression, depression, uh, financial, all of it, Lord, we cast it on you. Lord, you know what we have need of before we ask. You told Abraham to look at the stars and count them, to look at the stars and name them, and look at the stars and do you know their orbit? And of course, Abraham couldn't. But you said, I do. And then you said in Genesis 15, you said, fear not, for I am your exceeding great reward. I am your exceeding great reward. Lord, I thank you for that word, renumerator. As we don't fear and as we give you everything in our heart, Lord, that you show up and show off and that you cause finances to rapidly increase if we will let go and let God in fear not. In Jesus' matchless, mighty, holy name. Now, Lord, I just thank you. Lord, we're going to come boldly now before the throne of grace. And I thank you that we're going to receive mercy. We're going to receive favor. We're going to receive help in time of need. Because your scripture says that iniquities have a voice. Your scripture says that the devil's got devices that lie if we're not able to let go and let God. And I thank you, Lord, in that place of repentance, you're restoring our place. You're filling us full of fire and grace so that we can run the race. Stand up and just hover in here. Make it good as line as you can so I can go down and anoint every one of you with oil. We're going to shift the gear right now. I've got this oil from a holy place. Oh, shape of a bottle of I'm going to ask you to pray this prayer with me. Hallelujah. I am so. I can feel the presence of the Lord. Wow. Lord, stand up. I feel the presence of the Lord. The presence of the Lord is here. Say these words to me. Say, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I have repented for my bloodline. Generationally, I've repented 
for my sins, my iniquities. I have repented for lots of people. I will continue to repent and stand the gap in your name. And I receive fresh fire, a new desire to take me higher, to run the race with your grace, with your fire, and your protection, and your promotion. In Jesus' matchless name. Say this with me. Say, Devil, in the name of Jesus, I've repented from witchcraft, sins, idolatry, iniquities, and generational garbage. In Jesus' name, every area that you've had access in my life, I take dominion, I take authority over you now, and I command you to die, 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 say what you need to die. Hey, hey, hold, hold, hold. Yeah. 
pray God's going to give you a word to take you to see you. And you're not only going to move in the prophetic, you're going to move in the apostolic power of Almighty God. Because you were called before your mother's womb. Alright? The mantle that's on her is now coming on you only to add to your mantle because you have a mantle and you have a calling and you have a purpose. And by submitting and taking out what you want, a water lady like she is, you get a double dose of the Holy Ghost. Hey, hey, hey. Ho, ho, ho. Eti mole bossa. Laka. Shet de trevoro. Ote na la 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 sa. Ote na la la sa. Ya, 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 ya. Fire. 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 Come on, keep saying it with me. Fire. Holy fire. Holy fire. Holy fire. Holy fire. Holy fire. Holy fire. Holy, holy. Oh, you have not seen nothing yet, says the Lord. You have not seen anything yet. Your best days are about to take hold from this day forward, says God. Ah, but Ministering spirits of fire that excel in strength, that hearken to the voice, to the voice, to the voice, to the sound, to the sound, releases fire, releases angels, to the voice. Psalm 103, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Keep playing that song if you don't mind. One more time. Come on, everybody. Join with me. Join with me. Thank you for the holy fire. Holy fire. We're almost done here. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Brother, 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 I need you to be quickly, quickly, quickly. Hallelujah. You know, it's, I hear the Lord saying you're big in stature, you're tall in stature, but He's encouraging you. That's how you are in the spirit too. Oh, 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 brother, brother. Hallelujah. That's good. Is it all done? What do you please God? What are you asking God? Sorry. What? Oh, okay. Be healed? Yeah, why not just take it right now? Say thank you, Lord, for your fire that healed all disease. And that's why. Right now, in Jesus' name. Amen. Romans 5, it says we glory. We glory. 
glory in tribulation. We glory in troubles. We glory. Say glory. Come on, say glory. So that word glory, that word glory is an interesting word. And I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I thank you all, Lord.